just a question before we start. You guys already know what is synthetic sugar, right? So what do you think about it? Do you guys think that it's just synthetic sugar? If you do think so, raise your hand. Like, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't affect any performance Why? It's just a way to write code. OK, that's good. <laughs> I thought was someone would tell me that, yeah, I, I think so. So I will talk about uh, about synthetic sugar and what is the uh, what's the good thing about what's the bad thing about it. But first, before that, when I do Google search for my talk, I mean when I search for it, I found a bunch of tweets that talking about uh, synthetic sugar. Some are good, well, some are not so much. Like okay, say it's just synthetic; it doesn't matter about performance. And let's say what, whether the synthetic go to be overperform the other. Uh, good, good. And this my favorite. <laughs> so with the for loop, it's just another synthetic sugar for while loop. Well, you know what? I have to agree on that uh, to a certain point because in the end, it's just looping through interrogating through the array or um, you know a map or something. So. And, and I did check, and it's still, it, it, the performance wise almost the same. <laughs> so what I'll talk about, we will do a quick gap about what exactly is synthetic sugar, and sorry, and when it is sweet, and when it becomes too much to handle, and when it's become too much, what should we do in order to avoid it or in order to address it before? Everything, of course, is about me. <laughs> so I'm an Iron Man. Yeah, I'm Iron Man. No. Um, I'm actually, like um, Ramona said, I'm a senior front end developer in Cloudinary. If anyone heard about Cloudinary before, we just gave away the whole big student TV, 55 inch, and a bunch of unicorns. Yeah. And I'm also founder of Vue.js Israel, and I'm a writer of front end weekly, which I don't write that much recently because I don't have enough time. So it's not really front end weekly for me, but more like front end quarterly. <laughs> and uh, you can also check out my portfolio. Um, and I'm, I'm available on, on um, social media in Maya Chavin, so just hit up anywhere. And you can follow me or can uh, send me a message or so. So what, about, what is synthet synthetic sugar? This, this is a normal code. It's just do something, it's just a symbol loop. So in JavaScript, actually, you can write something like this. Or you can write something like this, which is a filter for ES6, or mapping the same array. It do the same thing like for loop. Filter and map different, but the same concept is the syn it's synthetic sugar. And you can argue that it's just a synthetic sugar, but it's not. Trust me, it's not, and I'm going to prove it. <laughs> so synthetic sugar, first of all, is syntax. And it's the alternative syntax that allow people to write simpler code, more usable, and it's supposed to be a good code because it's simpler and use, it's more usable, more reusable also, that developer actually can, can understand it and can save a lot of time writing it and for new developer like Junior, one who start, just started to learn about JavaScript, will be able to catch, to catch up the concept easily. And of course, because of that, it's, read, it's, it, it's very readability. I mean, it's very readable. The readability is high. And uh, like I said before, JavaScript, one thing I have to agree, JavaScript is a bunch of uh, JavaScript on about synthetic sugar. It's everywhere. It, JavaScript is, you can do a lot of things. It's dynamic. So everything in JavaScript, you can consider as synthetic because it's simple and it's, it's use, reusable and it's also readable. However, we see, let's say, when the, Java, so when the JavaScript is considered good, like syntactic is considered good, let's say when it's sweet, it's really sweet. Like you see here, the let and const, for example, is a syntactic for, it's a replacement, it's not replacement, it's an alternative for, 
for that, and it's good. It's avoid. It allow us to avoid on the on the problem with that, like uh, because that technically is, is the global object. If you dis, uh, dis, if you uh, declare it outside of the scope of the function, and it's actually protect our code from doing stupid mistake, like reassign it somewhere uh, inside the code when it's, you're not supposed to do it. Or for example, in this the example, uh, you. This is in the quiz, yeah. So this is why I call it the Deadpool trap. Because <laughs> it looks like Deadpool. <laughs> what the two are doing here. It's actually pretty common because when we tie with the plus and plus, somehow we type too fast and then we missed something. And then instead of doing like uh, printing out BAAA, it will print out banana. And it's bad. But with this uh, string template, we can actually avoid it. And also, it makes more readable. And then re let's go. You don't, we don't have to use like a plus. We don't have to use that plus. And plus is not good in JavaScript in general. And uh, another one, like this. We have to, like for example, I want to check if this expression is exist or not. Like, for, like I, I have an object that's input, and I need to check whether the object is, is passed correctly, whether it's none or empty or undefined. So I check, like, and you know, this is for common. Everyone uh, do it once in a while. But again, why do we do, need to do that? I mean, uh, it's true and false. You have to actually uh, write true and false here while you can do with double. What is this called? The thing? <laughs> oh, exclamation mark. Yeah, English. <laughs> so, yeah, the double exclamation mark. I did, I used to dislike it because I like, why do you do double negative here? But in JavaScript, double negative means that you actually convert it into Boolean um, variable. So instead of writing a whole long line, you just write it like this, and it's become super more concise. Everyone understand that this is to check whether this is true or not true, or whether this, this object is, exists, exists or not. How about the next one? I get this one, you get a lot. <laughs> right? Like we have, to, we have to get some kind of property, nest it inside a property, nest it inside a property, nest it inside an object. How do we do that? How do we know that which one of them is going to break our code and run them. So I need to check one by one like this, and it's go on. And actually, this one is not, the solution is not yet released. But for anyone who you Angular, probably know it. It's, actually, it's already past the stage, I think, stage three. I, I don't remember exactly. But it's going to be released soon. And already in Angular, uh, in Angular, uh, it's already embedded in Angular, so you can uh, you can write like this, and it stands for whether if the object is exists, then check if the child exists, and then take the property. So instead of the whole bunch, <laughs> wait one, two, three, check. We only need to write this much, and still understandable that we are checking whether it's none or not, and the code is clear. And the last one. This one, anyone use this one at all? Anyone? <laughs> okay. I mean, <laughs> well, the, uh, see, it's, it's the, the sweeter way to do it is just simply to use array, term, array uh, syntax, which is much faster, by the way, because the other way is you actually call the constructor of the of the class of the object function to come to provide you a new object, and it costs a lot of overhead in the in the background. Why we already have this one in JavaScript, so use it. Um, it's object or it's not the place for object oriented so much in this because why? It's faster in performance. It you can test it. It's faster. Everyone know that. <laughs> 
but again, it's res uh, respectively, which means that not everything is faster, but some of the syntax are really faster. For example, object creation and array creation, or empty an array when you do instead of doing the whole loop of supply, like delete or pop the or pop the uh, the element out of the array. You can just do simply array dot length equals zero, and it just clean up on the on the pointer on the reference to the array and clean up the array. Some uh, example, for example, the default value. Yeah, instead of three line, four line of code, you have one, but don't overuse it. <laughs> and and also you need to make sure that the input value don't receive false by default. And then, like you'd expect the input value to be something not false because if not, it just keep falling back to default. And <coughs> sorry. In this function, you can actually rewrite it by creating it because what it does is just providing uh, checking if it's event. Then if it's event, then filter out or uh, even sorry, uh, it's just filter on the numbers that is even from the from the array. And if we write, write normally, it will be take about nine lines of code. Meanwhile, if we use the filter, the new syntax, it's just two lines of code. It's much really more readable, right? And I and you also don't need to to think up a proper name for the function. I hate naming function anyway. <laughs> but sometimes it's just too sweet. Everything is sweet. It's good. It's good. Everything is actually literally everything is is uh, is good until certain level. Switch also synthetic sugar also certain point when you overuse it, it's become really bad. We call it diabetes, and this one is short, and if you on the syntactic, um, it used on the cool syntax. Like, can anyone understand like how the logic here works? I mean, we can actually guess that it's doing flatten the array by the name of the variable. But I mean, if you try to debug it or try someone new come to the team and try to understand what is one doing, like how, how it works in the background, what, what, how, how it loops, it's hard. Because how am I supposed to know what enter, which one is, okay, what is the original, what is the flattened, what? Or in this, we can, or in another one is that we rewrite in the refactoring the, the same function to a little bit more clear. But still, if, if you use cons and cons here, you get an error. You know why you get an error here? Because the cons, the function doesn't compile uh, before everything, like for normal function. The function actually, in this case, is compiled inline. So if you call reducer before, it will not compile. If you if you if you call reducer uh, inside flatten inside uh, sorry if you call flatten flatten array before reducer uh, so, sorry if you call reducer before flatten array will define you get an error at the opposite is and then in this case you need to do it that classic way, like put it inside the rat and inside the same function. And this works more or less. Still, reduce is the most um, hard to understand, at least for me, because how am I supposed to know which one to reduce, which one apart from the example that like you take the sum? Or in this, the tree dot. I got my, my colleagues the other day actually told me that the three dots really annoys them. <laughs> because it's nice in one hand, but in the other hand, like if you pass three dots, so you, is it going to be a rest or is it going to be um, spread? Like it going to collect everything together or it going to spread everything into, into params? For in this case, the first one is to collect, the second one is to spread into an uh, argument again, but the same syntax. How, how are we supposed to know? How anyone supposed to know? It's thinking about new developer come to the team. And just 
in this case, less code doesn't mean that read more readability anymore. Because you simply cannot see it, you cannot read it. New, new developer come into your team, which is say, what is this? I mean, I got it a lot. <laughs> And now in our work, we use a lot of ES6, and and once in a while, the new developer come in and complain about the fact that uh, the code is really hard to read because it's a lot of um, literary, like a lot of spread, a lot of uh, filter, a lot of map. Again, you need to cautious in this. It's just very confusing if you overuse it, and in. For example, Chris, or Chris already tweeted about it like about two years, three years ago. And there was a quiz on, online. You can check out the quiz and tell me how much score do you get. Because um, that's hard. <laughs> the quiz is hard. You're not allowed to use any help, actually. And the quiz will give you a bunch of code writing in ES6, in the new syntactic sugar in ES6. And it makes you realize that you can actually write con very confusing code, even if you don't meant to be, just because it's too e so easy to use it. What else are there to watch out? The next example, filtering and mapping. Any one of you do this, the first one over there? Like, if I need to filter a map, <laughs> if I need to filter a map, and then I need to actually kind of modify the map to return for me something else. That in this case, it's like, okay, I re receive only the even number, even number, and I get the, the multiple of the even number. So if you write, you using synthetic, it's so easy. Filter dot filter dot map. Or in the classic way, you can see we have to write a whole nine, nine lines of code. So what is the question here is what is the the running time? What is the running time of this code? Answer question? Uh, answer? Anyone knows? Yeah? The same? No, linear Yes, you are right. Both of them are running in linear time. Which means the ON is great. Why we care? It's performing the same way. But in JavaScript, if you add more, yeah. But in JavaScript, it's ON. It's linear, but not really linear. Not really ON. Why? Because, for example, in big number, if you write the first one, filter, the browser actually have to wait because it's synchron synchronized. In JavaScript, it's one thread. Unless I'm wrong that they, they already now that multi thread. But as far as I know, it's only one thread in the browser. And if you run the, the filter, which means it goes over the loop over one ten hundred thousand of uh, of the elements here and doing something, and then return a new array. And during this time, unless you do in some hack to make it asynchronized. It will, the browser will stop working, like freeze, literally, until it finish uh, iterating through the loop. And then the next thing you do is that you get the, is you get the map or a filter, and the, the map function, the, the data, the, the, you got the data or a filter, and the map function will be run on the filter data again. So think about it, it's like another 100,000 times of running and another data, another array will be created from this, for, from this uh, just a symbol of uh, function call from filter and then map the whatever with filter. It's two resources here. And the browser will stuck the first time and the browser will stuck the second time until it finish iterating. Why in the for loop, you create the first array, you create the array in the beginning, and then you looped in through the, norm, the normal array and the, the, the normal data, the original data, and do whatever you want to do it during the iteration, and get back the array, uh, the new array. And it's the browser stuck for like 100,000 times. It's much better, it's, not, it's much faster in this case. 
and I actually run the benchmark, uh, a test case for it, so you can check it online. You can see that the, the two over there, the filter and map, will run about 50% slower than the than the other one. And if you if if the number of uh, uh, the uh, the number of elements increase, it will be even worse. So yeah, it's not it's concise code. I mean, shorter code doesn't mean better performance anymore. So that's something. It's so easy to actually oversee this because why why you should receive it's so easy to just say okay dot filter dot map dot reduce dot something because it's the same thing it's, it's it's linear but in in theory it's linear but in actual code especially for javascript it's not linear it's it's not linear because everything is synchron synchronous and the, this one spread like i said before so in this example, we have a child object which we spread on the uh, on the property of mom and on the property of dad, and the mom is like this and the dad is like this. So they have something similar like tray A and tray B, but what if I only want to get tray A from object of mom and tray B from dad? Which way should I write? Or if I want to get without the useless info, what should I do? Whether the spread operator will help me? Again, it's like you spread everything. You don't really care. You don't really know what you spread. But it also means that whatever junk that in the, the object that you want to spread or you want to inherit from, it will be there. It will be in the new object. And it can be bad. You say if they both have the same ID, let's say have up to two elements, and they both have the different ID, and then you kind of join them together, and you only want to get one ID from, from either of them, and then another uh, another property is from another of them. But so it's like you cannot really control the code. You cannot really. It's, it's much harder to actually debug this. If something have if something go wrong with one of the object you spread, then the other way like just go and, and select manually which which property you want to get. So clearer, mm, it's clear because it's just spread, but still make a lot of overhead later on. Think about you have now you have only about two, but about five five objects you need to, to spread. Just do dot 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 spread dot 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 spread dot 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 spread. File like that is hard to control. It's hard to know which one is over override which one, uh, which one is stay the same, which one is um, <laughs> is need to I mean which one is original. And yeah. And the last one. Uh, okay, I found this tweet. I hope he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I actually like it because, say, it's sweet, it's synthetic. But then I saw one thing, Babel. Why do you need Babel for writing synthetic syntax? I mean, synthetic sugar in JavaScript for ES6, let's say, for example. The truth is, for this small function sum up just to do one thing is sum up on the uh, on the number passed to the to the function in babel when you when you use it with the default config this is how it look it's something like this you can check <laughs> um the, and this is bad performance also because they actually literally to also one loop and to get all the parameter, another loop, and then you check and uh, something, something, something. You don't need to read, but yeah, it's only five, <laughs> five lines of code, and it go to 30, 31 lines of code. And why so? Because IE and Safari doesn't support uh, some of the feature of ES6, some of the synthetic sugar we we always like. 
I-11. We can argue that I-11, no one cares about I-11. But for, the, for a safari, let's say, you should care. I mean, 80 most of the synthetic sugars, 80% of them, or 90% of them was already supported in modern browser. However, if you really want to think of on the user from any web of the world, because you cannot control them, you cannot really tell them that, hey, your browser doesn't, doesn't support the spread operator, so sorry, you need to go and download something else or update it. Mm, user don't like it. And Internet Explorer, I, I, you can agree with me that t Internet Explorer, no one care. But I can tell you that in my work, we do have customers that use an IE11, and every time they report some, some bug, it's bad. <laughs> so, hey, that's this one. One nice thing about this is actually in different. Uh, it's not not really um, a performance issue. It's actually a performance issue, but I was not so sure it's a synthetic thing. It's more like a dynamic way of coding. Um, so I just put it here for just reference. You, if you look at this, it's actually fine because you can. You it's the beauty of JavaScript. You can um, dynamically add the new property in the same property, uh, the same object. Like in this case, we add the Q and Z 55. But in the in in V and V8, like in the Chrome I'll say, uh, engine in Chrome engine, um, sorry, JavaScript engine of Chrome. In order to make it fast, like we saw nowadays, in uh, to run JavaScript uh, very very fast, it keep the hidden class of each object it created. It keep the hidden class, and every time when you add a new property, it actually create a new shadow, like a new hidden class, uh, in order to to make to make sure that the to to make sure that it will be able to access the object fast enough. And so if you add a new one, let's like before at the before when create the P and Q, both of them will point to the same shadow object, like the same hidden class in the background. And then when you add another property to Q, it actually point the point the object is create a new class. It's, it's the in the back in the what is in the behind the scene, the compiler create a new the create a new class. And map like hash on the property into that class, and the previous class become the hidden class. And if you do it ten more times, like adding a new a new property again and again, and ten more hidden class will be created. And it's bad for for performance resource management. So that's also the reason why I don't put class here. Because someone, some some people will ask me, why don't you put class? Because class is just function in uh, JavaScript, and it's only because function in JavaScript means that it's not good when you try to do object object oriented in the object oriented in JavaScript, uh, because JavaScript is prototype oriented. So if you use function, it's, you use class, it's actually the the wraparound for object, for sorry, a wraparound for function um, create like create new function. The class is function, mm, but class, if you use it correctly, for example, class, um, because in class you have your display, uh, actually it's a way organizing your code, so you have to declare all the properties in class before beforehand, and it's helped the developer to build a new, uh, a, a good way, a good habit of de declare all the property beforehand. So this make the performance better. So I, I cannot put it here. It's still it's function, but in the practice, it's a good practice. If just think about it. Like try not to use a lot of a lot, uh, Try not to modify a lot of properties in the same object. Because behind the screen, it's not the same object. It's actually the new object already. The same the old object is still somewhere. It's hidden there until you delete one of the. If you delete one of the property, it would revert back to the old to the hidden object created and that's why we need to handle our code with care which 
easy to easy say than done, right? <laughs> so what is care? The care stands for check, check and check. Always have to check. Don't assume that this is just synthetic sugar. I really don't like that just thing because you need to check. If your coal is, you cannot just use it blindly. A filter, what is the side effect? Um, and a map, what is the side effect? Reduce, reduce, is re using recursive mode. What is the side effect of those kind of stuff? Check with someone, no, check with your, um, your senior, check with Google, <laughs> check with anyone, Twitter, check with Chris. <laughs> uh, and ask for review. Don't, don't never assume that you write the best code. I never assume that I write the best code. Actually, on the other hand, every time I look back to my code after about one month, I feel like, who write this code? It's not me. <laughs> uh, yeah, you need to ask for review. Code review is good. But what I can say that is I found it's more better to actually do code review with a junior. Uh, someone new to the company uh, tend to always um, assign a core review to the person who new to my to my team, or someone that have less experience, because the person will give you the honest info, like honest feedback, why he doesn't understand this, or whether the way I'm using this code is correct, or maybe he he saw what I don't see. And the other day, um, like a couple months ago, we have the same debate about what is better switch case or if else or just object mapping. We have the whole article article about that. You can read it online. <laughs> and read. Always have to read. Read document. We have documentation to read. We have plot to read. We have other people uh, best practice. A lot of resources. Just need to read. The more you read the better you understand like how the compiler work behind the scene, how the Babel trans, tra how Babel uh, transfer on your code to actually uh, other ES5 code. Some, something like that you could know by reading or trying to read when the bundle the code. Of course, it's not easy to read those, those bundle, but yeah, I tried. I did, and I like it. <laughs> and the last one is complexity. You can make it concise, you can make it short, but you need to make it stand for itself. Make it understandable, make it really, 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 uh, how to say, clear to almost everyone. 90% is good, no one really get to 100. 90% is, is, is good enough if you write a code that you put in mind that someone else is going to read my code. So. Just try to make it short, concise, and explicit. Like, make it more understandable. Make it like thinking you're writing a code for about 10 years old kid going to, to join your team soon. Well, 10 years old, yeah. Sorry? Exactly. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's actually true, you know. Nowadays, you have developer that 10 years old, so you really need to write code that for, for 10 years old to read. And also, documentation. Write code good is not it's not only thing. Need to do a lot of documentation. Like not common because we will say if you if your code is good, you don't need to comment it. I agree. If your your code is, con is explicit enough, you don't need to write comment, but you do need to document it. Let's say you have a component in React or in Vue or in Angular, you need to write what actually com the component receive, what is the parameter, what exactly is do. This saves a lot of time for other people to get to know your code and to understand the logic behind it. Don't need to explain line three doing this, line four doing it, just the general idea. But use a simple word. Don't use the high level words like you need a master degree to understand it. Just use a normal human being words uh, for, for other developers to understand because not everyone understands English that high. <laughs> not me. <laughs> Okay, and that's it. If you cover all of that and you try, if, if you try to make a habit for yourself, think before you do, do it with care, like we say, you'll be fine. <laughs>